Hello friends, I'm Linda Ann Smith using Color Art products again today. I think most artists will agree that our emotions come out in our art whether we intend for it to or not. Sometimes I ignore the emotions but they still come out, but today I'm deliberately going to allow those emotions to come forward. This week many countries were attacked in Paris, not only France. So that's what's in the back of my mind as I create this peace symbol from the Eiffel Tower. I'll be using several of the artist pigments by Color Art called primary elements, including these colors, Apple Blossom, Beach House Blue, Evening Primrose, Mediterranean Blue, Mystique, Spanish Moss, Solar Gold, and Pear Blossom. I'll combine these with primary elements, clear glaze medium. Materials from other companies that I'll be using include an Artist Loft canvas board, an embossed pen from Ranger, Versamark's Watermark stamp pad, Raphael's Sistine Madonna rubber stamp from Museum Stamps, Princess Gold embossing powder from Ranger, and a black sparkly embossing powder that I bought at Joann's. I threw away the package and I don't remember the brand name. I'm going to show you the steps I went through to make this canvas. And uh, first of all, I did a pencil sketch and then went over it with the Ranger emboss it pen and heat embossed the sparkly uh, embossing powder that I got at Joann's. My studio is quite small and it's virtually impossible the way the outlets are arranged to show you that procedure. But I'm working on some solutions. Next, I inked my Raphael Sistine Madonna rubber stamp with the Versamark pad, uh, the Watermark stamp pad. I used my embossing heat tool again to bring that brownish looking powder that I shook from the Princess Gold Ranger embossing powder over the image that I stamped with Versamark. The powder begins as a brownish tone, but when you heat it, it turns into a beautiful lustrous gold. And out comes my Color Art Primary Elements Clear Glaze Medium. I pour a small amount of this onto a white porcelain plate that I use as a palette. I begin to add a little of the powder from the Artist Pigments, the Primary Elements uh, Artist Pigments. And here I have Mystique Blue and Mediterranean Blue. That's what I'm going to start with. Add a very small amount of each of the powders that I want to use around the glaze medium. I just pull it out with a tiny paintbrush. The colors are sometimes thought of as very sad, like I'm very blue, but I always think of them as calming and peaceful, so that's very appropriate for what I'm doing today. The Mystique color that I just added uh, is very aptly named because when you mix it with a liquid, it changes from a almost royal blue color in the powder to a more blue-greenish color. And now I'm adding Beach House Blue. I'm going to use these cool calming colors in the background in sort of a French Impressionist way to create the background that's calm and peaceful. Even though I'm mixing my artist pigments with medium, I'm going to spray the entire canvas to give them a little more fluid cons consistency. The water won't hurt the embossed areas. In fact, the embossed areas will give it a bit of a border to contain the colors that I want to put in. I give it a good ample spray, but I begin to notice that the it's puddling. So I take a brush to smooth it out and go over the entire canvas with the brush just to smooth the water out a bit. Now I begin to mix the powdered pigments with the medium. I'll dab these into the background behind the Eiffel Tower. Little note about my design, I considered letting the Eiffel Tower peace symbol become the skirt of an angel, but as I developed my design, I decided that uh, I had this rubber stamp of Raffaello's uh, little cherub, and I decided that that would be quite appropriate, even though Raffaello or Verbino was Italian. One of Raffaello's beautiful portraits that he did during his very short life of 37 years was of the King of France, Francis I. And my own symbolic connection here was that uh, this ch these cherubs are a very small detail of a much larger painting. And I connect that to the French tragedy, the Paris tragedy, as being 
it it took in a lot more. Uh, it wasn't a small painting in Paris. It encompassed at least 23 countries who lost people there. And as I work, I see many more symbolic relationships, but I'll let you draw your own conclusions about what a painting means to you. I'll continue adding layers from my palette of blues until I get an entire uh, background filled in behind the peace symbol, the word peace, and the cherub. I decided my first layer that uh, I got it a little too wet, so I'm siphoning up with a paper towel, I'm siphoning up some of these puddles that have formed so that it will dry and I can add yet another layer of the blue from the blue palette. I think this angle of the camera shows how pretty that golden uh, embossed angel looks on this composition. When I feel in the background behind her, she should pop forward a little more and be even more prominent. In several places on the canvas, my blues ran together and just sort of made one color. So I'm going to break that up by adding a little of this solar gold primary elements. Um, it's a yellowish hue, so yellow and blue make green. That'll break up some of those colors and make it more um, impressionistic in the background as I wanted it to begin with. But before I contaminate this solar gold, I'm going to touch up her wings. Because once I start brushing over those bluish colors, it'll my brush will probably have some greenish tones to it. I decided to put in another layer of uh, blue before I do my golds in the background. So I've washed my brush now and mixed apple blossom with a whole lot of medium so that it would be very transparent. And I'm working on her skin tones, although I got it off camera a little bit, but you'll see it later in the video. I'll give the background a little more time before I add the next layer of blues. I'm going in now with this nice uh, violet blue color called Evening Primrose. The first layer of color is almost dry, so I can dot this around uh, in places to create that impressionistic look. And it's a very rich color. Uh, darker than most of them so it'll really bring everything else forward. Before I create another layer with the background I'm going to let it dry so I'm using some white paint to uh, clean up the letters where some of the colors bled across when I had it too wet. I thought the white was really striking here on the background but I wanted a calmer more peaceful look so I decided to mix solar gold with a little pear blossom and fill in the uh, Eiffel Tower peace symbol that I've created. This will be my first layer for this. And that looks a little calmer, but it's still not quite as toned down as I want it because I want this to be a very serene looking composition. So I'll add another layer when this one is dry. I decided to go in with my solar gold finally and add a little bit, bit of uh, it to break up the background, pull some of it together with this, but chop some of it up with this, depending on where I put it, what colors I put it between. If it seems like I'm working on the background a lot, I am. That was pretty much the biggest part of this painting. But every layer that I add makes it more luminous and shimmery and calming. I'm not filling in every space, but I'm filling in spaces that just seem to need an extra punch. And uh, I'm wiping back with a paper towel now and then. Talking employs the left side of your brain and arting employs the right side of your brain. So if I really want to do a good job, I voice over on most of my videos. That's why I know what's going to be happening here very soon. How many times have you watched a YouTube video and the video creator would say, oh, I'm so sorry, my camera died. 
The battery went dead. Well, it's about to happen. I don't know why the batteries don't last longer on these cameras. If anybody knows the solution to that, please let me know. It appears that I'm going to have to have two cameras because they don't come with two batteries. This camera isn't even a year old, but it's been corrupting files, so it's time. And here's what you missed, although I wouldn't have been able to show you the embossing part anyway. I went back in over the uh, peace symbol sign with Spanish moss, painted that in, let it dry, I redid the black embossing area, making it thicker on some sides to give it the peace symbol dimension, and then I added stars, gold stars, in embossing to the Eiffel Tower because that's how I remember the Eiffel Tower. It was a snowstorm in December, not a terribly cold time, but the snow was just coming down just like these little flakes on this, and all of a sudden the tower lit up, and it was just a very big time in my life. And that's the way I want to think of Paris, as the happy time that I spent there, not, not think of it as the terrible act of violence that just occurred. I considered painting the word peace with blue, white, and red for the French flag, but decided that it would uh, not add anything to the composition. In fact, it would diminish it.